Right, we're moving on to uh, restuffing the capacitors or the uh, electrolytics here. I've removed this one and in doing so um, lost any chance of reusing these wires. Um, these are totally inflexible. I've already had to replace one here, this grey wire, but you can see um, the actual insulation is all cracked away and it has all the way on these ones as well. So we've got one 16 UF capacitor here, it's at 450 volts, uh, negative terminal there and positive terminal there. This capacitor has got two capacitors inside it and it's got no negative terminal so we'll have to do something there. The actual can's negative and it relies on the connection through the clamp to, uh, to complete the circuit. So I'm going to need to clean this clamp up a little bit. And um, one thing I notice, if anyone ever tells you that electrolytics aren't shiny when new, look at this one. This one's just come out of the clamp. You can see the dirt where it's been uh, exposed. And it's all shiny where the clamp's been on it. I suspect, looking at the date, 0852, that this, uh, well, sorry, looking at the number on top, 0852 that that is in fact a date and this is a replacement even though it's the right size looking at some of the uh, some of the pictures of uh, other people's um, U102's on the uh, on the internet now what I'm going to do is I'm going to and I have to bear in mind that this is covered by a clamp here and it sits through the hole in there and there's not a lot of room uh, between that and the front of the chassis there so that's where the clamps gonna sit I'm going to have to cut it here and um, try and put some silver tape around it just to hide the joint because this all this is going to do all this top cover is going to do here is um, look like it's um, original and hopefully the other clamp will sit on there and you won't be able to see it so well or oh, sorry see my uh, repair so well let's see how it goes I notice some someone's tightened this up really tightly in the clamp and it's uh, deformed the metal that's another indication that uh, this is a replacement. Right, so I'm going to get some masking tape and uh, put a nice circle around where I'm going to cut and I'm going to use a razor saw to cut through there. Right, here we go, it's capacitor pulled apart. As you can see it's uh, just a roll up of like paper and uh, inside there'll be metal foil, like sheets of metal foil, very thin just rolled up and up and I've never seen one like this before that's got a like this plastic paper surround but uh, yeah you can see how rotten it's got down the bottom here there's the connections to the top sorry there's the connections to the top this one's broken off you can see you can see that one there and usually they put a blob of uh, tar down the end there to hold it in place. So, what I've got to do now, there's a Paxlin disc inside, is pull all this apart, pull those little bits of tape apart, and then we're going to drill holes next to these tags for the new capacitor to come through. And then uh, plop, the, plop the capacitor inside, if I can say it, and um, zip it back up again. As easy as that. One thing I would recommend you do when restuffing is see these terminals, the inside where they've been riveted. What they do is they uh, pinch a bit of this quite thick silver foil because that's the terminal so they'll they'll put a bit of that and then they'll complete the rivet 
And what you get left is you can see the top one where you pull it apart is bits of silver foil left trapped underneath the rivet. So take a scalpel and run it round the edge until you you can see I've done it here until you get rid of all the bits of silver foil because you don't want those inside your capacitor once you seal it up because um, it will short. Right I'm ready to solder the new capacitor uh, into the top here 116 UF capacitor 116 UF capacitor both at 450 volts it's quite amazing isn't it how uh, technology has moved on in uh, 60 years hmm right what I've done is put a little bit of sleeving on the end of each lead and I'm gonna I've already drilled holes next to each rivet and uh, <coughs> they come out oops, they come out of the back of each tag one there one the other side and that's where I'm gonna put the capacitor through and solder it and I'll just put this down and uh, show you when I've soldered right, it. Right here we are, here's the capacitor done it's got a bit of silver gaffer tape if you just take a mark on the capacitor and just roll it you'll find the length of your tape and all I do is just put a bit of tape on there and just cut a slice off because uh, that's like an inch and a half diameter and I only want around an inch or less than that actually on the end of the capacitor now this slides into there like that and once this slides over so it's going to go in this clamp here to about there I think it was yep to about there once that slides in there and you're right under there you'll hardly see that tape it won't look you know, it won't look out of place anywhere because you'll hardly see it. One thing I did notice, like an idiot, I thought this was the date, 0852. And uh, I must say, look, 0852, 0852. And then right on the bottom of the chassis there, you can see 10852. So, maybe that's just a part number. There's another one there, I think. On the tuning capacitor. So, I think that originally said, you can just see the remains of the one there, 10852. So, it's not a date at all. I'd suggest that that is the date, SD. You just got to find what the code was for that. And I can't see the date on here. Maybe that was the date there. 02 something. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, so that isn't the date. But I'm still not sure this is the original capacitor. I mean, they don't usually make those sort of dents when they when they put the clamps on. Never seen that before. Um unless it's on a replacement but anyway um, yeah all done and uh, just got to do that one now before I do this one I've got a lot of wires to replace because I might as well get these done while, while, this, uh, while this one's out so a good 2-3 hours work there I would think right on we go right I've just started rewiring and just to uh, for those of you who may be on your first or second valve radio, just another little tip. You're pulling lengths of wire out this, like this from the rear of the chassis out through the front. So just keep an eye on how the wire runs. And this is where taking loads of photographs will undoubtedly help you. You see how this wire runs flat against the chassis? That might be important. And it runs all the way down here to this tag there. 
Now I've cleaned that tag out and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a crock lead just like this and I'm just going to put it there so I remember where that wire came from. Then when your missus calls you down for something vitally important you'll know where the wire went. You can quickly just tag it to the other side as well just so you know you know that one's free now just so you know the connection goes here and the other important thing is to clear up any loose bits of wire that you've extracted where they've been wrapped around the tag so just remove those so wire in hand Let's get rewiring. Right, um, more work being done. Um, renewed all the wiring to the uh, smoothing capacitors here and the output of this big chunky resistor. Now, this is that double capacitor, the 16 and the 8 UF, and it is dry as anything. And this is what you get. When your capacitor's dried out, looks like breadcrumbs. <laughs> that was what was inside, dry as a bone. And um, what I'm going to do is I've drilled another hole through there just to make a negative terminal, and I'll put another wire leading out from it that wouldn't have been there on the original, but um, there's no way I can make the the outside of the can negative once I've taken it apart. So, there we go. Next stop, putting two new capacitors in there. Which is easy to do, you just um, wrap the two negative leads together. And um, actually, when you strip this old naked old wire out, don't actually throw the wire away because it makes for good um, you know you can make um, uh, extensions for your capacitor from it it's really useful to have I've got some thinner stuff more uh, flexible stuff on a um, on a reel but this is just as good yeah so just crunch it all up or roll it until the um, insulation comes away and then you'll have some wire to use. Right here we are, all the work on the uh, smooth capacitor has been done and rewiring almost all of the crumbly old wire. There's a few bits of uh, stiffer wire here um, which I may replace. But yeah, it's all working. I've taken my own advice and wrapped the speaker in a cardboard box. Um, so, that's um, Back to sort of working and quite safe though net now one thing I did measure yesterday was the um, if, if there was any DC voltage on the output side of the coupling capacitor between V3 and V4 and I'm going to turn the radio off a minute so we're safe All right I'll plug it so I measured two volts positive with regard to ground um, on the end of this capacitor. Now the output valve is obviously cathode biased cathode biased by this resistor here. Now what happens if this is leaky if this capacitor is leaky and it puts positive volts on the grid then the cathode bias will be reduced and the valve will draw more and more current and it will get hotter and hotter so it will draw more and more current and the end of valve will just burn out. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is replace this one. And I'm going to have to replace this one because it's wax capacitor and it's probably leaky as hell anyway. That's just part of the tone circuit. I've already put a modern capacitor just in there because this one and um, this one was across the mains and that had started to bubble and probably ready to go bang so I've put a capacitor across the mains here so it's going to become unoriginal behind the, the 
sh um, chassis um, on the front of the chassis. So I'm thinking, well, if I'm replacing one, two, three capacitors, I might as well replace the whole lot, which means I've got, I think, nine capacitors to replace. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, that shouldn't take long. That's just part of any normal repair, really, replacing capacitors. Uh, once I've done that, um, I'll get on to do a final clean-up. Maybe replace a couple of these wires that are really stiff and um, I'll put it back in its chassis and we'll see how it looks.